The most popular virtualization app on the Mac is currently Parallels Desktop. And I mean, it is for a good reason. Because Parallels Desktop allows you to easily set up and use a virtual machine like never before. It's never been so easy to set up a virtual machine like it is on Parallels. And I have no idea how those guys do it. The problem with Parallels is the price tag. You have to pay a hefty $50 to use the full version of Parallels, and there are no free upgrades. You gotta pay up for that as well. So now there's a question. Is there an alternative? Well, I know, sorry for touching my monitor. This is the alternative, UTM. UTM's promise is simple. It's run any virtual machine for free and easily. So, how does it actually run? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. Let's go. Okay, so these are our three operating systems. Teki Mikois, Teki Bimbo, and Teki Liniku Bantu. Please excuse my names. So the most popular operating system that people are going to be running on UTM is Windows. All right, so we'll just log in, and there we go. So there are two ways of running Windows on UTM. Number one is the virtualization option, and number two is the emulate option. So what the virtualize option does is it gives you the best performance out of your virtual machine, but you can only run an operating system that has the same architecture as your computer does. So if I have an Intel Mac, I'd only be able to run the 64-bit version of an operating system, and if I have an Apple Silicon Mac, I'd only be able to run the ARM64 version of it. So let's start with the virtualization option and see how that compares to Parallels. It's all good, right? Um, well, not exactly. While we're at pretty much the perfect point um, on this Windows virtual machine, it took a lot of work to set this up. So let me just create a list of what I had to do because I am not going through the pain of installing this again. All right, turn to the iPad. <laughs> Finally, we're done. So as you can obviously see, these are a lot of steps, 44 of them. And the funny part is, this is actually the skimmed version of it. Some instructions on how to do certain things aren't even listed in here. And, of okay, for, for Intel Macs, the list is shorter, but I mean, Intel Macs can already run bootcamp, so yeah. But now, how does UTM um, Windows actually work? Is it is it on par with Parallels, better than Parallels, slower than Parallels? Well, I can definitely say that it is a little bit slower than Parallels in terms of animations. They aren't as fluid and aren't as fast, but that doesn't mean that the operating system isn't usable. It is still very, very much usable. So UTM is great for casual usage. So if I'm editing a document in Microsoft Word or I'm surfing the web with Edge, or I'm just installing a couple apps on the Microsoft Store, or I'm playing around with some settings, or I'm checking my mail, my calendars, things like that, they run completely fine. What I wouldn't do over here is play games. And sadly, that's one of the main reasons that people get Parallels, to run Windows games that aren't on the Mac. And here's the reason why. You see this right over here? Head into HQ local machine slash software slash Microsoft slash Windows slash DWN and create a new D word value titled force effect mode. Why do you have to set this up? You see, UTM doesn't actually have a proper graphics driver. So without using this registry hack, you won't get transparency, you won't get rounded corners, and you won't get that beautiful blurred background on your login. So if that's the case, why would you even consider even trying to load a game? Exactly, you wouldn't. To sum things up, this is good for casual work. I wouldn't recommend doing any resource intensive work on here. Okay, now it's time for option two, emulate mode. So what emulate mode does is it allows you to install an operating system of any architecture you'd like. So on a 64-bit Mac, I can install an ARM64 operating system, and on an ARM64 Mac, I can install a 64-bit operating system. Yay! But the trade-off with that is that your virtual machine is much slower than the virtualize option. But just how slow is it? 
So right from the second we boot this up, we can see it's very, very slow compared to the virtualize option. The loading uh, sign is still going, still waiting for the setup screen. Come on, any day now, you can do it, I believe in you. You're still not gonna do it? You're not, you're not gonna listen to me? All right, um, uh, oh, okay, never mind. I think we've got something now. Oh, uh, what? Okay, finally. Come on, maybe move it up a little bit. I gave you eight gigabytes of RAM for a reason. Okay, all right. So obviously considering the time it took to boot up and the time it's taking to show the next part of the setup, this is not the optimal experience for a virtual machine. Parallels and the virtualize option of UTM are definitely much better options than this crappy emulate mode. So that's the end of that segment. Now, what's the deal with macOS? macOS is a much better story. So you're gonna download an IPSW from MrMacintosh.com, I'll link that below, and then you'll just um, create a virtual machine with macOS as you do it normally. That's only available on Apple Silicon though. And then you, it'll ask you to install the IPSW, you will. And within a few minutes of setting the virtual machine up, as you would on a regular Mac, you'll be here in Mac OS. And the thing is, this doesn't actually run bad. It has fluid 60 FPS animations. Um, apps open up nice and fast. All right, you see App Store, News, Podcast. Let's just open all of these up. And they're all open. Well, um, except for the ones that are still bouncing. And if I just head to mission control here, um, yep, right there. Yeah. But the issue with this is this. This is the issue with this. Very concise. You can't sign into your Apple ID on macOS UTM machines. And here's the reason why. So let's go to the About This Mac page and you'll see that the computer is an Apple Virtual Machine 1. This is actually a virtual machine created by Apple, and Apple has specifically blocked Apple ID sign-ins on this virtual machine computer that they've made. And I don't know why they did that, it's weird, but they did, so you can't. And that immediately harms the experience of this macOS virtual machine because the Apple ID is a central experience of using a Mac. If you don't have an Apple ID, then you might as well just stick to using Windows. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about UTM. So Mac OS runs great, but you can't sign into your Apple ID. And Binbo's runs okay, but I wouldn't recommend playing games. So yeah, that's it. Okay, now how do I end this? I forgot how to make videos. Okay, I just remembered. So thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, take a shower, do whatever you need to do. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.